Listen, I, I want to go back to, to April. I mean, listen, you, you know, you, ha you had a two-fight losing streak. I mean, against top competition. But you come in, you absolutely dominate an undefeated Invicta champ. I mean, I thought it was a phenomenal performance. So I got to ask you, I mean, did that feel good? Did you take something out of that? No, it felt so amazing. You know, it's just one of those things, like, there's so much pressure going into a fight where you're, like, on a two-fight losing streak. And I think I made a lot of adjustments in my camp and just in my mentality, like, training, just – you know, it's like a can't lose situation and you know, they all should be like that, but it's a little bit more pressure with two fights like, you know, behind you. I was gonna ask you, cause I mean, listen, you're only fighting the best. I mean, in your position, you only get to fight in the best in the world, but that was so good. I mean, was there a key that you looked to? I mean, was it, was it physical? Was it mental? Was it tactical? Like what, I mean, what, what do you think the biggest thing was? There was like so many things just going into a camp. I made a lot of adjustments with like things that I trained training place, places that, you know, like I lost in my in my previous fights, like this is why I lost, I need to address these issues, um, changing my diet, like using the UFC PI and like actually like, you know, I'm so small that weight is never an issue, so I just, you know, it's like skinny fat, like I don't have to worry about it, you know, but actually like take an approach to like, you know, putting a lot of protein into my diet to get bigger and stronger and um, just like mentally, just kind of like being super focused and driven. There was just like so much that goes into it, and I felt really good for that fight. I guess I saw you posted on social media where like, you know, you've gotten stronger like post USADA or whatever. I mean, so is that is that been kind of the big goal now? Is you know, hey, I know I got the skills, but I got to dial in the body basically. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like um, you know, just it's it's so hard. You would never think it's so hard to be like have to eat, but I'm like every I'm like okay. I had my meal, okay, one hour, okay, I gotta have my protein snack, okay, uh, I gotta have my protein shake, it's just like a system, and it's like, you gotta be so on point, and I'm, it's, uh, it was definitely an adjustment, but I, like, all my training partners, and probably my opponent, like, you know, they, they felt, like, my strength difference, for sure. So you get this matchup, co-main event, awesome, fighting in Mexico, awesome, I know you got some Mexican heritage, so I'm sure that's cool for you except that you're fighting the Mexican, right? So I just, I wonder like if that was, you know, if you were excited about the opportunity or, and then maybe you were a little disappointed that now you got to come in and, I mean, you're probably gonna get some booze on, on Saturday night, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's such, it's such a crazy thing because I've always had such support from the Latin community throughout my career. But you know, whenever you're going to someone's hometown, I mean, it is what it is. And my coach even warned me is that, hey, the Mexican community, like they are, they have such a strong, like, uh, fighting background like over the years like such a strong history they love the fighting and you know I know as like a, like a Latina that we support our own and you know so I'm definitely like not going to be surprised if I get some booze but um, overall like I know uh, a lot of the fans have expressed that you know they're fans of both of us but so hopefully it's not it's not too mean like the in Brazil, when they say, how do you say, Bob? Um, Uvai Moreira, you're yeah. going to die. Yeah. Please <laughs> that. I was going to say, I mean, as, a, as a competitor, what's that like? I mean, I, I know, like, I hear it from everybody. Once you get in the cage, you don't hear anything. You hear your coaches, you know, you're dialed in. I get it. But, you know, that moment when you're walking in, if you're hearing booze, I mean, it, does it kind of get to you a little bit? Like, hey, what are, they, what are they doing here? You know, I've experienced it, like, on a smaller scale because, you know, I fought a lot of hometown people, but... Um, I, I think it like bugs you a little bit, but um, like I think you know, like when I walk out, people have always commented like, "Carla, you're so like cold faced, you're so like focused," and it's true. Like I feel super focused when I walk out, and when I'm in the cage, like I hear my coach's voice, and it's very like dialed in, you know. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the it's not too crazy. Um, but um, I'm a you know I'm a professional, and you know you gotta deal with it. <laughs> No question. Talking about Alexa, what you see in her, I mean, she's, uh, you know, still very young in her career, but she seems like she's making some improvements as well. I mean, when you break her down as an opponent, again, you're fighting the best in the world all the time, but, you know, is she on par with that level? What do you think about her? I think she's definitely an up-and-comer. You know, I've seen her fight in Invicta live, and I was really impressed. Um, she's a great fighter, and she seems to just be getting better and better, which... Um, you know, like in striking and everything, her last fight, she had a really great performance against Carolina and dominated someone who, you know, was a title contender who, you know, who's just like one of the top ranked girls. So I think she kind of really uh, set herself apart and showed that she really does belong in the top 10. And, uh, you know, I know she, she obviously she's hungry, you know, but uh, I'm kind of one of the older old school ones. So, you know, I got to kind of go in there and stand my ground and 
You know, I feel I feel almost like a gatekeeper, you know, like I think a lot of people like fighting me, they're like, oh, former champ, like this is like a really big step. So, um, yeah, I think uh, it'll be a good fight, though. I, that's why I wonder, because it's, it's certainly easy for them to get up for you. Like you said, you've got the former champ. I mean, that's that's easy to go for. Right. Is it hard for you to get up, so to speak, for these people that, that haven't accomplished what you've accomplished? Um, you know what? It's it's. Uh... I, I, like, I know she's, like, super hungry, and I know for me, like, the drive doesn't come from, like, the specific opponent necessarily. Like, for me, my drive's just always been within me. Like, inside, I just have something that just makes me want to, like, be better and, and get and be aggressive and just win, you know, and be the best. And I think that's always something I've had, like, within me and not necessarily, like, depending on the person on the other side of the cage. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, you went to Big Bear for camp. I mean, you got to adjust for this altitude for sure. But but who made that call? I mean, did you were, were you like, hey, we probably got to do something? Or did somebody around you say, we, we, we got to do something? And was it difficult to talk you into uprooting a little bit? How did that come together? Um, you know, it, it's kind of crazy how, like, uh, my, my coach actually was the one who, who mentioned it. And I never thought that it was something that I would do. Like, it seems like such an old school, like, cool thing to do. You know, you like, my coach took, like, Tito Ortiz up there a couple times rampage like so he did a lot of camps up there over the years but uh, it's been like a long time since he's been up there uh, with the fighters and you know it's just kind of like I don't know the feeling is kind of like almost like nostalgic and it's just like such a cool feeling to be up there and it, it I'm a very routine person so it definitely like took me out of my like comfort zone but you know when I actually felt the altitude I was like, <gasps> like good thing I came up here you know, um, I think it was a smart decision, and I also spent uh, two weeks out here, so month total, uh, living at altitude. That's crazy. Does I mean, is it? I mean, how do you feel? Are you like just anxious to get this fight over with, or do you feel like, man, I'm so glad I did this because I know I'm going to be ready? How do you feel like spending that much time away from your daily routine? You know, it, it, it's hard. It's like for me, it, it was kind of nice almost to like get away from like all the distractions. The only thing that kind of was like, ugh, like a little hard was being away from my dog, which. He's my life. He's my world. But um, I've been checking up on him, and he's doing great. And, uh, yeah, so to me, it's just like being away, just totally focused, just literally like it's almost like being in the tough house again, just eat, sleep, train, just all fighting. So, you know, I think it was a really good decision. I know you know that you're not like – ready for a title shot right now or whatever, but you've got the pedigree. I'm just curious what you thought about seeing Zhang Wiley come in and kind of come out of nowhere, right, and, and, and come to the top of the division. When you see somebody make a run like that, does it, does it excite you? Do, you? do you wonder, you know, I mean, what, what does it do for you to, to watch something like that happen? I mean, like, for me, when I, uh, after I saw that fight, I just had, like, that emoji, like, you know, like, oh, my gosh. Like, um, it just, it just, it's like the nature of the sport. You know, you think that, that the things are like the rankings are how they are and this person can beat this person but you know there's just always like young up-and-comers just coming out of nowhere and just like making a storm and um you know you just that's why like even in this fight with alexa like she's she's hungry too like you never know like just because someone isn't a familiar face necessarily like in the game doesn't mean that they're not you know going to come after it and and make a make a make make waves in the division yeah, no question. So you got the monkey off your back, right? I mean, you don't have to deal with that pressure anymore. So give me the idea. What is what is the goal here? What's the focus? What's 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 the stakes of this fight as far as you're concerned? Um, the stakes, I mean, I guess, you know, whenever you're in the top 10, you're always like moving towards, you know, just up like trying to get up the ranks and, um, you know, the person in front of you is that stepping stone, you know, so I'm just going to go out and do like what I always do go out for the win but like for me honestly like the hugest thing like I put so much into this camp so like you know I'm like I'm not gonna go through all this you know I did all this for a reason you know to go out there and get the victory I like put my dedication my time in and just honestly like fighting in front of this like the Mexican crowd like to me it's like I've always wanted to fight you know somewhere like here and you know it's just it's an honor and like I'm excited to like just be here and, and fight in front of you know, the, you know, Latin community. So with that in mind, I guess, 
when you play this fight out, how does it go? Because, yes, they're going to be cheering for the Mexican, but I can speak from experience. When they see a good fight, they'll cheer that no matter who it is. And you do have those shared ties as well. But So how do you see this fight going? I mean, do, do you go in there and, and, and are, are you able to dominate her? Or do you feel like this is going to be one of those kind of back and forth, maybe bloody battles that will certainly bring the crowd to their feet? When you, when you play this one out, how does it go? I mean – for me, I like, I always, that's always like your dream fight. Like, I just want to go in there and kill it and dominate it. And I've definitely put the work in and the time in. But I also know that, you know, Alexis from Mexico, she's not coming here to play. You know what I mean? She's coming here in front of her people, in front of her hometown, and she wants to make a statement too. Um, I, I believe last time she fought in Mexico, she got the win, and, you know, she's used to being out here. It's like very familiar territory. So, you know, I'm uh, I'm definitely expecting the best Alexa, you know, and I'm putting out my best me too, so we'll see.